Need to. And now to a story that you'll see only on Nightcast. Ransomware, cyber attacks, data breach, terms many of us have become all too familiar with. The FBI says while our nation was focused on the pandemic in the last year and a half, a different kind of virus was on the attack. It was from hackers infiltrating our computers and our lives. Tonight, Richard Reeve introduces us to a St. Paul company that's fighting back. A group we'll call Good Guy Hackers. So I think I got a good understanding of where we need to be. Under cover of darkness, we actually will go at night, emulate an actual bad guy. Walking in a single line to avoid security cameras. And break in using the same tools and techniques that the criminals use. This cybersecurity team moves in. We worked with this organization to do what we call penetration tests. Their mission this night, to uncover cyber and infrastructure security weaknesses at Interium, a Plymouth furniture supply company. I'll show you, yep, we were able to get through this door, yep, we were able to bypass this sensor, and at the end of the day, we plugged into your network and took it over. The idea is to beat cyber thieves at their own game before an actual ransomware attack or other threat. Try to look at any available computers that they could get through, try to get onto our network once they got into the building, uh, as well as continue just to snoop around where our, our servers are to see if they could get access to our network. The team in two parts. One company, Red Team Security, zeroes in on computer systems. Their partners, Foxpoint Security, accesses the building itself. Because if you have the most secure computer network in the world, but your door's unlocked and anybody can walk in and steal all your laptops, well, <laughs> that's a pretty big issue. Within minutes, both teams are inside, although they've triggered an alarm system. They quickly locate Interium's servers, equipped with USB drives, loaded with a custom code to remotely control the company's computers. The red team finds an unlocked laptop that allows them access. We actually had an employee transition at the time, and that computer was left open and available uh, that evening. And of course, they got access to it, and that would be a vulnerability. Interium says despite that access, the red team wasn't able to compromise the company's network or servers. But Brian Hallbach, the red team's security consultant, says the test was still yes, a success. Yes. It helps them discover the unknown unknowns. So it helps uh, flush out the areas of concern that they don't even know exist. Back at the team's St. Paul office, crammed with computer gear and hacking tools. And just with a couple of clicks of the mouse on an innocent looking email, your whole computer is taken over with this big splash screen that is demanding a payment. Hallbach explained more about the growing ransomware threat, where a simple click allows hackers to install malicious software designed to lock files on your device and demand payment in order to unlock them. It's getting down to the point where a knowledgeable teenager can launch some of these attacks if they have the proper software and they can tune it and they can launch an attack against you. It costs pennies, less than pennies, for them to create the uh, emails and send them out. And then the reward, absolutely huge. How huge? We asked U of M cybersecurity expert Jonathan Rolstead. Every year, the FBI will put out a report that measures it in billions of dollars of damage to the economy. $4.2 billion, according to this FBI cybercrime report. Rolstead says thousands of companies and governments are impacted. Either through lost work time because a company's network is down and they can't perform business, or due to ransoms being paid, or through fraudulent wire transfers. The FBI says nationwide ransomware losses are climbing. $29 million reported to the feds in 2020, compared to $3.6 million just two years before. The Department of Homeland Security says ransomware attacks are up 300% in the past year. We're talking about criminals who want to make money illegally or who want to do harm independent of a profit motive. Rolstead says specific numbers, including here in Minnesota, are difficult to track because companies are reluctant to disclose they've paid a cyber ransom. I think it's correct to say that they don't want it to be widely publicized because uh, they're afraid it could make them look bad and make it look to their customers like they're not protecting their information well. Rolstead says this is a problem that is not going away. His advice, back up critical systems separately and get a security check. It's a good idea to, of course, um, always search uh, for any vulnerabilities within your corporate network. And it's also good to hire somebody to uh, double check and examine those uh, vulnerabilities in case 
you missed any. Hallbach says it's a balance. Corporate security has gotten better, but he also warns cyber thieves are growing more sophisticated, that anyone using a computer needs to be on alert. So it's kind of this little cat and mouse game, that even if you're doing everything perfectly, even if you're doing everything correct, the attacker just needs to be one little tiny step ahead of you, and then it's kind of game over. Everything else is a domino effect after that. And experts say ransomware demands are not cheap. A recent Verizon study found the average breach cost between $826 and $653,000. ABC News says the largest ransomware attack against an Irish software company over the July 4th weekend demanded $70 million in payment. Oh, God. You know, the FBI recommends that companies not pay these cyber ransoms, but we often hear from the companies that they felt they had no choice. Yeah, that's right. The Fed say paying up will only embolden hackers to find more victims, but some companies say they have to pay because with their networks frozen, business is at a standstill. It's the biggest problem, you might not get your data back even if you do pay. Even though they promise you'll get it back, exactly. Well, thank goodness for the good guys who are just as smart as those who <laughs> want to do harm out there.